Hi, this is Kirsty Valentine, your favorite TT, your favorite tea time spiller. Thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today. God bless you. Um, I have a story, and this story is so heartbreaking. Um, I don't know what to say, I don't know what advice to give because it hurts me, it pierces through my heart because it's actually going through it um, and it's actually happening to my very, very good friend, my very, very childhood friend. Like I always say, that no one is an island you need very very good friends and one thing to life is to have a very very good friendship a meaningful friendship a lifetime friendship because it matters and when you have very good friends you must hold them dearly to your life because they are your second family there are certain instances that the fam your own family your own blood family are not opportuned to be there when you are going through certain things your good friends comes in and there are certain opportunities and situations in life where um, your good friends are not opportunes to come into your life to support you your blood family is there so you need both sides of um, um, uh, support and um, uh, a group you know cycle of good friends you need that network in your life um this story is hitting me so close the reason why it's happening to my childhood sister my childhood friend when i say sister not blood sister but a childhood friend whom i know dearly and i call her my blood sister she got married to this man a uh, couple some some years ago and um, her kids are grown up now i think she has got one they've they've been together for 22 years in marriage and um, the first son has got graduated from university the second one is almost leaving university and the third one is going into university sorry about that i was a bit tasty my my throat is very crappy because of the weather yes the third one is getting into university and suddenly the she went on a company course she went on a company she works she works for the oil company and she kind of like every and um, mid um middle managerial post and she's gone for this two uh, six weeks course um to apply for a certain position that's quite going to be vacant in her organization and she went to Bayesa uh, state for the training and uh, her last son uh, is in boarding house so and the two of the two other ones one is finished university and serving the youth service i think we are all familiar with the youth service in nigeria uh, and then the second one is in the third year at the university. So she really doesn't have any little kids she's taking care of. So like all her babies, all her kids are like out of the nest. So she's, she's a free bird. And um, she went for this six weeks course um, in the oil and gas sector in Bayesa State. And before she came home, um, she already met. She kind of like had a clue that while she was away, her husband might have brought somebody in. Because, I mean, we, 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 I'll just, I'll say, we women, God has blessed us with that spiritual, that sense. You can sense when something is not right around your husband. You can sense the perfume or the body perfume of, even if they don't use any body perfume, you can smell another woman around your house, even if the man has cleared everything out. If you're a sensible woman, if you're a smart woman, if you're a, if you're a lady, a wife or a woman, that or any if you're a person that is very, very observant, you would sense the presence of somebody else that has come into your property when you've left it. Because you know how you've left your property. And when somebody has been into your property, they never leave things the way they met it because they are not you. And so she sensed it and she's been sensing it for a long time. And um, so when she's sleeping at night, 
the husband's phone telephone rings and he gets up to go answer this call which is very unusual because she said according to her that she and her husband usually read together a book and discuss it and they're very intimate in the bedroom but it, quite recently the man has been distant has been a bit distant and she has noticed that in the last one year but when she came back from bias state she he is totally distant and when he bothers to come home at all he's coming home in the morning he's not even coming home at middle of the morning around uh midnight around 12 30 1 o'clock he doesn't even turn up to 4 30 or 5 o'clock so obviously he's been elsewhere and it cannot be work anyway so but i mean she has known her man even at the days when they were dating uh, because they all we all met they all met we were all friends at the higher institution at the polytechnic those days he kind of she knew that he was a bit of a philanderer that he had an open eye a corner eye for the ladies you know but she thought okay we are in secondary school he's we are in high institution he's young you got so many beautiful beautiful attractive young single ladies all around so he's in his it, it's a nature of a man to have that quick peep and turn their faces but she accepted him and they got married and they got beautiful kids one thing i know about him is that although he's a bit of a philanderer he has the corner eye raised eyebrows for things in skirt and high heels he has been a good husband to her and a good uh, father to the children he provides anything everything and anything for his kids he loves his kids so much but over some time now um she, she he is a bit distance well he doesn't need to do the kids are away in the next but this is the time they ought to come together as boyfriend and girlfriend and be very very close because the kids have left the nest i mean the last one is in the university um, in the boarding house in secondary school very exclusive secondary school in in uh, in uh, Nigeria because he is he is in money let's just say he is money when you, when I talk about money he it's not just I'm not just talking about the Nigerian currency I'm talking about all currencies I'm selling everything so he is he did economy and um, industry management or something like that so he knows the market he knows he knows everything about investment finance and everything so he knows where to, to put his money and he he started investing um all over when he traveled to america england switzerland he used to invest and buy little little shares and over the years they have grown and yielded him a lot of money so he doesn't necessarily have to work so much his investment are bringing him money and in foreign currency so he has money so he is a hot cake to a lot of young girls in nigeria and that's the thing when you have spent all your life with your husband building everything to Together. these little things in short skirts want him in fact they don't just want him they want you out in fact when I say they want you out I'm too kind they want you seven feet under they want you dead and they come in and they take over that marriage they take over everything that you have worked for because these girls you see them you say they are they are young girls no they are young physically but spiritually they will sell you college change you wouldn't even know the country they dumped you in that's how smart that's how diabolical that's how evil that's how self-centered that's how in fact if i have the word to say to pronounce any word more than desperate that's how they are and they are callous when i say they are callous it's worse than careless that is what they are they go to every garment white garment churches yeah and we know those white garment well okay i don't want to go for they go to all these white garment churches they go to um these uh, uh people from the most um affairs they go to affairs they go to um, um imams who pray and incandate uh, with certain holy books in the quran they also go to babalawas so they combine everything together because everybody most people i mean don't get me wrong there are very decent men and women in their marriages uh, very decent husbands they, when they go to work they come back they don't go out to drink they don't eat they don't do nothing outside they come home with their wife they stay with their wife and their family but boy it's the war between the lady with the ring that's the wife who has built up that 
for empire plus the side chick because I, I had a friend who we, we're not very good friends now because her morale is very very nil I'm not here to judge but I know um, she made a, a, commit, a, a comment one time that really really I took my, I, I bent down, I took my, I put my hands in my shoes, took off, put my hands in my feet, took off my shoes, and I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran out of, I didn't want her as my friend. Because she made a comment, she said, oh, she's got the ring, and I have got the man, and boy, she did, she got the man. She used him and everything. And it's and it, it, it's it's not ordinary hand. It's not ordinary. Now my friend is saying that the husband does not want to see her. Just her voice speaking alone in the house irritates him. She doesn't want he doesn't want to hear her voice. Her voice irritates him. Her presence, everything, everything about her irritates him. He gets so angry, he gets so irritated. He just doesn't want to see her in her in her presence. And in a society where the tradition and culture it's not on the side of a woman, but on the side of a man, where does she go? What does she do? The system and the law system that we don't even have social services in, in Nigeria. Uh, to be specific in a system where you don't have social services in a system where the government does not give support to battered women or anything like that you have all these ngos they say this they are helping uh battered women they are out there to make the money from un or whatever but in a system where um uh, welfare support for abused women in their marriages or widowed women with children it's not interwoven in the law and guidance and protection, then what does she do? What does she go to? Because her, her, her mom and her family basically live off half because money. So she's basically, basically this chick, this babe, I wouldn't say has moved into her bedroom yeah has moved into her bedroom she can the bedroom she has shared with her husband for over 20 something years this she's out of there this this babe i, I don't know i don't if you're in my shoes you wouldn't know what to call her has moved into her bedroom yeah sacked the gate man and the house help which she employed and has been in their service and employment for over 22 years and brought in her own helper and get man so basically she's still living in the house but not living in the bedroom and what does she do she doesn't want to lose the custody of her kids because at the moment her son is her second son is going into the third year and he has stopped paying the school fees so he doesn't want to know about the children and the last one is uh, in the in the final year in secondary school and uh, the plan was for him to come here abroad to uh, get his A levels done and then get into university, he stopped all that. Now he doesn't want, even want to see her. He doesn't want to smell her. He doesn't want to hear her voice. Definitely, that hatred has gone to her children. And I'm thinking this is not this is not an ordinary hand. This is boju boju. This is uh, a, what we call a bo no concon a bo da bad medicine juju. You know what juju juju and uh, um, uh, juju and uh, this all this juju and things like that charm means when you go to an African witch doctor a babalawo we call them babalawo uh, or um, ebo uh, or bo you go to these uh, babalawos these uh, traditional uh, 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 you know witch doctors and then you pay them because you need their, need them to do certain things for you you pay them a lot of money and they they take a, the picture something that belongs to the man and the wife they do it and it's in a diabolical way and in a demonic way that whatever that lady has asked the babalawo to do the babalawo will do it and it will actually does will happen. People say, oh, um, I'm a Christian. It doesn't happen. But my dear, it happens. These are the challenges and these are the tests that we go through. And then when 
you have a good pastor and you have good church members that can pray with you and defeat the enemy you it, it it you overcome it and then it now becomes a testimony and that's when people now go to give thanks in the church to say this is what they've been going through in their marriages for me i would say because um at first, when they were in this marriage, she's well-educated. The man said, listen, you don't need to work. How much do you earn? But, I mean, I used to advise her those days. I said, listen, no matter how much your husband has or no matter how influential or how worthy he is, it's good for you to have your own side business. Even if you are selling tomatoes and pepper, you know that at least you have one penny in your purse. You see how this has come to play for her own good. I know that she's going through a lot in her marriage, marriage right now. But at the moment... Um, Friends are trying to come together uh, to, to raise funds to help her get an apartment because I mean she's too she's even too scared you know when she wakes in the, at night, when she she's too scared to sleep at night because this lady is so diabolical. Uh, even the mother of this girl is coming to the house and claiming the kitchen. You know, the office of a woman is, is her kitchen. A woman, the wife of the house, is the president of her kitchen. Nobody goes into her kitchen to cook or share food because she, that's, that's her marriage. So basically, the mother of this girl that moved into, is, is taking over her home and her husband, the mother is living there. And the, her mother is even the one cooking in the kitchen. So can you imagine, she cannot even go into her kitchen to cook. The kitchen that she designed and cooked for over 22 years, she cannot even go into her kitchen to cook. So that's how bad it is. And even when she's sleeping at night, she's so scared. She is so scared because she said her mom is one of these. If when you see the mom, you if you see her coming, you just walk the other way because it's like she said you can you will just know that they are so diabolical and the mother is so desperate to get rid of this woman so that her, her daughter can come into this house and then she will now become the mother-in-law and enjoy the fruit of her, her daughter's husband and they don't care how they achieve that as far as her daughter is in that home. She she does not care so what's up guys please what i have said i said listen your children are grown up you have a side business i'm not somebody that would advise anybody to leave their marriage or leave their relationship but when it comes to your life a life that never gives you one and a half one and a half chances it only gives you one chance a life does not give anybody one and a half chance not to talk of another chance so it doesn't even give you one, one over two, one and a half chance. Life does not give you chance. When it comes to your life, the safety of your life, the longevity of your life, the welfare of your life, the health of your life, your children are grown. God will lead you. You are a Christian. I think you should think about it. Think about it. Because this girl has brought her, she's in, she's living in the house. I said, you don't even know she's taking anything from your wardrobe. So I, I'd rather you just move on and take care of your children. Your son is serving you service. Maybe he will get a job and they will join you in your business and they will help you to sponsor your last son. Even if he doesn't come to England to study anymore, he can study in Nigeria and then who knows what the future holds. And I know that as a Christian, the future will not be dark. It will be tough but you would overcome it, you know. So guys, I don't know what advice to give to my friend because it's, it's hurting me. She has invested all her time in this marriage. This is why you see some people, they, you know, some young ladies that will say they don't believe in marriage, they just want to have a child and they just want to get along. This is why you see some single parents who will say, listen, I'm not going to suffer or bring any man up. I did it for my daughter's or my father's dad and he went, on, went off with another woman. I'm not going to do it for anybody. I just want to live my life. If I don't meet any man who is my standard or higher than my standard forget it i'm not going to do it so i'm not going to blame them because everybody has got their own eye experience everybody has got their own 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 experiences that they have been through in their life and we are not here to judge so guys please leave a comment inbox me add kirsty at 298 um uh, at gmail.com add let me repeat it sorry add kirsty 298 at gmail.com inbox me your message if you've got similar experiences and you would like to share we are totally conf uh, confi uh, confidential um please email me 
uh, your life stories or your um, uh, comment. You can always leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Please, a lady like us needs, a, a, a lady as we, like us, we women need support. Please, please leave a comment because the society is not on her side. The society is on the man's side. Africa is a society where a man can marry as much as he wants, as far as he loves them all equally and he can provide whether he's a Christian or not. Please leave your comment downstairs. Until our next video, this is your favorite babe, your favorite titi, your favorite girl, Kirsty Valentine. Thank you.